Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to look at something that that slipped by us on the Alta survey that we've been working on, and uh, uh, it got caught in time. So uh, we haven't sent the final delivery. So we, we got time to fix this. But it was a good example, and I wanted to I wanted to go over it with everybody. So for those of you that don't know, there is a problem on this sheet. Okay, and it has to do with. The levy and the and the and the highway there or the county road. So take a look at that for those of you that don't know, and tell me, see if you guys can figure out what the problem is. Okay, and then I'm gonna we're gonna talk about what the problem is and how we prevent it from happening again, and we're gonna look at what 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 we actually failed to do in our initial survey for the actual spec. You get you guys to start learning some of the spec, so this is an opportunity for you to do that. Okay, and then Nick asked me a question this weekend when he was studying that I wanted to just answer the group. Okay, about what it is surveyors actually do. Okay. So, uh, anybody want to, this isn't a, like, this doesn't affect your, your pay here. So, does anybody want to venture a guess at what the problem is with the survey? If you don't know. Okay, let me, let me ask Angelo. Angelo, whoop, sorry, Austin. Here, I, I got it, I got it. So Angelo, um, do you see where our parcel ends? Were you out in the field on this one? Where is this at? Huh? Oh, he yeah, was he? Yep. He shot in that corner right there. Out in the delta, remember? That little island? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so look at, look at right here. Angelo and Elena and Michaela. So this is our parcel. Yeah. Okay, this is the public road. Mm -hmm. What's the problem we have? If you were gonna buy that resort, what what potential problem could you have? It has to do with access, access to the public road. What do you think? Parcel doesn't go up to the road. Yeah, mm. good, Michaela. Parcel doesn't go up to the road. Parcel doesn't go to the road. Did you hear that, Austin? Got a gap. Yeah. Yes. There's a gap. Okay. Now, as soon as Danny told me about this, I knew immediately, almost immediately, what the problem was. Okay. And the only reason I knew that is because I've done a ton of boundary surveying in the Delta. So does anybody know why we have a gap between our parcel and the public road? My guess initially was that something to do with swamp overflow maps, but okay, that's a good guess. Yeah, it's that not, that's a good guess. That's not that's close. Yeah, maybe building up like building up levees. Okay, yeah. So it has to do with the levee. Okay, just so you guys know, the right of way of the public road. If you look on the assessor's plat, is right in there somewhere where that blue line is. Okay, so we've got a gap in between. Okay, the gap is the levee. They would have had to build up that levee to gain access to the island. Okay, so here's the, here's the problem. So the levee isn't in the right-of-way? It's not no, part of the right-of-way. No, so here's the problem with levees. Uh, nobody ever keeps track of who owns them. Okay, and the general rule, the general reason why that is is because they are typically non-taxed parcels. So here's what I, I mean, we've talked about this before, but basically anytime you guys want to try and track down ownership information on a parcel that isn't taxed in data tree, a school, a railroad, a park, like can we ever get a deed for those through data tree? No. No, and then here's why. Nobody cares because it doesn't mean any money to anybody. Yeah. Like people keep, keep track of who owns my parcel at 3938 Kimball Lane, why? Why do they care who owns my parcel? They want to know who to send the tax bill to. So do we have to go through that same place that we did for the railroad? No. Nope. Okay, so railroads are taxed at the state level by the okay. State Board of Equalization. Levies, as a general rule, levies that are not private, so most of the del most of the levies in the Delta are public, public facilities. There is a reclamation district or a levy district that maintains them. They are not taxed. Okay, so the land that we're dealing with is the land between the county road. Well, the, the county road sits on top of the levee. Okay, but my guess, so there's two possibilities here. Either A, the levee is owned in fee by the levee district, or B, it's it's owned by the what we call the upland parcel. Okay, the parcel on the dry side of the levee. Okay. Now here's what happens sometimes. Sometimes let me draw, draw a picture. So here's what happens. You got the levee. So here's the, the water side of the levee. Okay, and then you got the levee. Okay. So here's your levee like this. Okay. 
And what happens sometimes is, is if this isn't owned in fee by the district, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's an easement, and sometimes it's prescriptive. There isn't even a, an official easement. And so if you've got this parcel over here, okay, let's just say at one time it went to the edge of the water, okay? But can you really use this land? If you're, if you're, if this is a land that's no. hacienda out in the Delta, can she really use this land? No. So what happens at some point in the chain, it doesn't always happen, but it happens frequently, is they'll come in and somebody will think they're being clever and they'll deed to the to the toe of the levee, okay? So Elena deeds to Michaela. Michaela's buying Elena's hacienda out here in Walnut Grove, and she deeds to the toe of the levee. And what we just did there is we, cre we created a severed parcel, okay? And it, what, what can happen is this can actually become no man's land because this tech, that technically was an illegal subdivision, right? So uh, Now, Elena could come in and claim title to it, but it's, there's potentially an illegal subdivision. What we just did is we just really mucked up the title to this dirt under the levee. Okay, so a severed parcel that is no longer taxed? No, what, when, when we say, usually when we say a severed, severed parcel, that means an unintentional, it, it unintentionally got cut from the rest. Okay. But it's still considered one partial legally? Okay, so here's the dilemma. This is why we call it clouded title. Like anytime you hear me say clouded title, that means there isn't a good answer. Okay? Cause, cause, so here's the thing. So Elena, if Elena deeds this parcel lying west of the levee toe to Michaela, one could argue that Elena still owns this, mm -hmm. right? But then in California, that's a violation of the Subdivision Map Act because you can't split land by deed unless this was sold pre-subdivision map back. Yeah, so, 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 now, so now we have a question. So is this an illegal parcel that Elena owns or does Michaela still own it or does somebody else own it? it yeah, it's clouded title. What's the validity of that new Probably, new if, if you had to ask me, it's probably still Elena's and it's a, an illegal parcel. But I bet you I could find an attorney that would argue the opposite. Okay, that's why it's called clouded title. And Elena would still pay taxes on that full parcel. That's a good question. Probably not, because the assessor, the assessor, uses the deed to Michaela. And does the assessor understand any of what we're talking about? No, I don't understand. Now you think somebody would be sitting there going like, "Hey, now we're taxing ten acres instead of twenty acres. What's up, right?" But like, what's this land worth with a levy on it? Yeah. It doesn't really change the assessed value of this that much, okay? So that's why this stuff gets lost, okay? So <clears throat> I don't know what we have here. So this is either owned in fee by the adjoiner, the dry side, the upland owner, or it's owned in fee by the levy district. If it's owned in fee by the levy district, we're probably screwed, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the deed for the adjoiner and see where is the, well, I don't know what line it is. Is that southerly game? Where is the southerly limit of the of the upland deed? Does it go to the Does it go to the water's edge, or does it go to the toe of the levee? Where does it go? Okay. Okay. And then if let's just say we pull the we pull the deed on the dry side, and it stops at the toe the the, the land side toe of the levee, or it stops at the center line of the levee. If it doesn't come all the way over to the edge of water of the Sacramento River, okay, then we got to get a hold of the title company and say, hey, we need we need a dock. So let me teach you something else about title surveys here. Okay. I have yeah. a question before you move yep. forward. When you when you say upland, yep. Which upland is the dry side? Dry side. The dry side meaning still the east side of Ryer Road. Okay. So if there's a flood, what happens to Snug Harbor? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna flood. Okay. So dry side means the dry side of the levee, the other side of the levee. The other side, which is because you said Ryer Road's on the levee, right? So yep. it's west of Ryer Road. So it's west, west of Ryer yeah. Road. Yeah. Northwesterly of Ryer Road. Okay. Yeah. Got it, thanks. Okay. Okay, so let me just, here's, so here's, I want to explain what our failure was and what it wasn't. Okay, so here's where we slipped up. When we get into a situation like this, our responsibility is to ask the title company for the dock. Okay, it is not our responsibility when we're doing a title survey to go chase down that deed for the levy district. As a general rule, there may be some rare exceptions to that, but, so if you read the title survey spec, other than what's the typical standard of practice. If you get funky stuff, the, the title company has a responsibility to provide the documents to the surveyor because who's got the docs? The title company does, not the land surveyor, okay? So our mistake was not that we didn't map the deed for the levy, our mistake was that we didn't ask for the deed, okay? Now here's why this is a huge deal. 
given what we see on our Ulta, can our client access the public road? No, they can't. Yeah, the levy me. district owns it in fee. They can do whatever the heck they want. That's so they do they? Yeah. So is there? Do they have an easement right. over that? Like I don't know, man. This is, could be a is huge it, issue. Is this, it prescriptive? Yeah. Is it prescriptive? Right. Like this issue yeah. could tank the transaction, potentially. Okay. So <clears throat> let's just talk about. So let's look at the spec. And I want to tell you what part of the spec we failed to meet with our initial survey. And then um, let's talk about how uh, we prevent this from happening again. Rights of way and access? No. Okay, so there's there's several places. So grab a highlighter. If you don't have one, there's a pink one and two blue ones. Grab a highlighter. There's another yellow one. Okay, so you guys see this is page three of the Ulta spec. Okay, so let's see. Under field work, so section 5B, 5B1, the distance from the appropriate corner or corners of the survey property to the nearest right-of-way line if the survey property does not abut a right-of-way. Did we do that? Uh, we did not. No. If we had followed this part of the spec, we'd have caught the problem. Okay? we got to read the spec every time. Yeah, every time. you got to read the spec. Every, every time we do an ALTA, get the spec out, read through it every page. Okay? Wow. Um, Okay, look at 5B2, the name of any street, highway, or other public or private way abutting the survey property together with the width of the travel way and the location of each edge of the traveled way, including on divided streets and highways. If the documents provided to or obtained by the surveyor pursuant to section 4 indicate no access from the survey property to the abutting street or highway, the width and location of the travel way need not be located. Okay, so my guess is if we had caught that item, We'd have looked at it and gone, what's the width of the road? As soon as we would have looked at the width of the road, we'd have realized we had a gap. Okay, so what that means is, what I feel like we need to show on here is we need to show the width of the county road right away based off the assessor's plat with a note that says that's where it came from. And we need to show, uh, let's show the edge of pavement. Let's just put a call out on the edge of pavement, Danny, for the ortho. Okay. okay. And then we need to show a distance from one of those corners to the edge of the county right away, approximate edge of the county right away. Okay, and we can just, we can put on there, um, you know, approximate distance from parts, because did we survey the county right away? Nope. No, and we didn't have, if you read the spec, we didn't have to because we're not on a joiner. Do we adjoin the county road right away? No. Doesn't look like we do. Okay, but that means we've got some other information that we need to put on. Okay, so uh, it's those two sections. Now, if you go to page, I think it's page six. This is just a really weird thing that happened though, right? Like, how often do you get a parcel that's not a okay. button that's well, So you don't there is, you know, now I'm thinking about it, there is, I believe there is an easement. Um, In our title report? Yeah. We should have plotted it. Okay. I don't think it's plottable. Okay, and that's okay. So just so you guys know, there is a table A item that says plot all easements that serve the parcel, subject parcel. I want to know if they check that box. Okay. okay. All right, so just so you guys understand, let me explain what I just told you. We have to plot every easement that burdens the property. That is not optional. They can optionally ask us to, pr to plot easements that serve the subject parcel, but that do not burden it. So in this case, if there's an easement that gets from the county road to our driveway, that is what they call an off-site easement. And if the client checked that item on the table A, we should have plotted it. Okay, now even if the client doesn't check the table A, do I want to know where off-site easements are? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so on the Alta spec, if you look at uh, C, no, it's not. that's not it, let's see. Uh, okay, so C3, a note if no physical access to an abutting street highway uh, or other public or private way was observed in the process of conducting the field work. The location, the next item, the location and widths of right away abutting or crossing the survey property and the source of some such information. Okay, so probably on that item C3, uh, that could have that cost us this place. If we had if we just shipped this signed and I'd have missed that, they could have sued me for the two million dollar insurance policy we got. It's pretty simple. If the parcel doesn't have access to a, a, a public highway, what do you got to put on your map? I know. 
You gotta put a note on your map. Okay. All right, so let's talk about how uh, we prevent this from happening. So Danny gave us one suggestion. Like, look, nobody's in trouble. This is just, you know, it's us teaching you, teaching you guys, right? Thankfully, we had a sharp attorney that asked the question. Okay, and like, look, I got some mud on my face because I checked this and I just missed it. Okay, but we're never going to let this happen again. We're going to do better. Okay, so let's talk about some suggestions on how we don't ever let this happen again. And Danny had one. So what was Danny's suggestion? Every time we do an Alta survey, read the spec. Whoever's the project lead needs to read the spec. And I would recommend you just highlight the spec one by one. Okay, after the survey is done. Okay, I'll tell you something else that I goofed up on is Danny and I brought some docs with us to the field, but I didn't have a plotted survey when I did my sidewalk, and I should have. Because I might have caught it. Okay. Okay, what's something else we should it, that should be on our Alta survey checklist? The number one reason I will get sued on a land title survey is probably this one. This is most of the, a ton of the expert witness work we do is on that very issue. So what do we got to ask ourselves on every single Ulta? Do we have access? Do we have access to the public road? Which includes, you can abut a public road, but if it's all restricted access, that doesn't count. Yeah. Okay, like that parcel in Roseville that we looked at. Okay, so part of, part of this is, I've, and I've talked about this before, I don't want to get into details, but I talk about the resolved boundary matrix, right? So you can't just look at your parcel, you got to look at all the adjoiners, right? It could be this simple. When we do an ALTA survey, we should have a label on every adjoiner, right? What do we not have on the, on the, on the dry side of this? Yeah, we didn't have a, we didn't have a label. There's no adjoiner label. If somebody would have, if I'd have caught that, we'd have gone in and been like, oh yeah. Who does own that? Who is the adjoiner? Right. And technically, I didn't think about this till we started talking about it, but it wouldn't hurt us to, on the water side, to say, um, you know, uh, Sacra you know, Sacramento River, uh, likely owned by the by the state of California, navigable body of water, likely owned by the state of California, right? Because that's technically an adjoiner. All right. So, anyways, there you go. So how important is it is it to understand the spec? Critical. Yeah. And it's not just on Alta surveys. It's, it's when we're doing elevation certificates or LOMAs or or Danny's done some conservation easement work where you got to follow the NRCS spec. Yeah. You should always read the spec. Really, everybody that touches the job should read the spec, even if they don't understand it. <laughs> okay. We should read the spec. So. Okay. So uh, we're okay. Uh, the attorney asked the question. We're going to figure it out, and we'll get this fixed up.